Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to be taking a look at two of the most affordable red light therapy helmets that you can find, or they're not really helmets, they're caps or hats or whatever you want to call them. Um, so they're red, red light therapy headpieces, um, you know, and they're two of the most affordable you can find on the market there. There's one from Kinreen right here. That's more of the kind of uh, baseball cap style. And then we've got the one from DG Yao. That's more of the kind of kind of a floppy, uh, square-shaped one. Um, so, you know, I think both of these are very good products. I just did, did a quick test myself. Um, you know, I got this one a few months ago, and I've got two of them, actually. I got one of them, and my mom's been using it, and she's really been enjoying it. She's been using the one from DG Yao. And, uh, you know, I'm not always going to tell you what's the best product. I'm going to give you, you know, some information about both of them. I think they're both very good. I think they're both can be very effective. Um, but, you know, the best is, is, you know, a lot of times more your personal taste of what you're looking for. Is it intensity? Is it wavelengths? Is it, uh, you know, pulsing? Or is it um, whatever? And the reason why I got the DG out for my mom is because I know that she's kind of like me. She's got a bigger head, and I thought this one would be much more comfortable for her. So, you know, we can throw all those parameters out the window. Oh my God, we need all these, all this fancy intensity. We need the, just the right uh, pulsing frequencies. We need wavelengths. We need this or that. You got to find something that actually fits you first of all. Um, so, you know, that was that was the first key thing. So that's the best I think for me and my mom was to go with the floppy unit, uh, the, the more kind of square shaped. Um, but, but again, so there's going to be some pros and cons that are going to be unique to you based on what you're looking for and, and not just kind of mindlessly getting whatever's the biggest or most intense or whatever. Um, so, you know, those are, that's an important kind of caveat. I don't always tell you what's best, you know, give you information and let you, you know, be an adult and choose your own thing that works for you. So, Hopefully that, you know, kind of helps you can kind of contextualize because you can tell from a lot of my blogs and a lot of my reviews, I'm not just coming out and telling you what's the absolute best. Um, so anyway, so we've got these two units and, you know, I already know something because I've tested um, the pads from DGL. I've tested the pads from Kinreen, so I already know a lot of what I'm going to expect. Um, but, you know, we're going to show it to you, test them out, see, you know, see what's, you know, what, what might be good for you. So, anyway, I've already got them out. They're actually brand new, and I don't know. I didn't want to do an unboxing video because that would just take a lot of time. Um, so, yeah, this is the one from Kinreen. We'll take a look at this one first, and then we'll move on to the DG Yao, the more kind of square-shaped one. Um, so the Kinreen one is, you know, nice, sturdy, kind of baseball cap style. Um, it's got, actually, its controls are right here in the back. Once you plug it in, you've just got an on-off button and a settings button. Um, I bought this one a couple months ago and haven't had time to review it. But they said the newer models, they do have some pulsing frequency. So if you check with them, they have newer models with pulsing. This one only does um, on-off and then dimming. It'll dim, you know, the brightness or the intensity. Um... So, so that's, that's an important caveat. Um, so they came with this power adapter and it plugs right in. And then once it's plugged in, it gives you some confirmation with that these lights kind of illuminate. And then when I press the on button, it turns on the lights. Uh, the interesting thing about their technology is that um, they use these 50-50 LEDs and they, there's three different diodes in each of these spots. Um, so they, they said in their, their information, they do 630, 850, and 940. So they have three different wavelengths. Um, you know, it's an interesting choice to do 630 and, and especially the 940, but, you know, different wavelengths might activate different things, have different penetrations. Um, just, you know, it's all kind of energy at some point. Um, so, you know, it's an interesting choice. And then for my model, I'm not sure what their future models look like, uh, but this one just controls the dimming. So I know if I press this twice, it brings me up to the brightest setting. So when you first turn it on, it's at the lowest setting, which might be good because you don't want too much intensity because there's not a lot of 
heat sinks or there's not a lot of thickness for this to go. So these can get pretty hot. And if you remember my, my blog on uh, the Kenreed pad, it was the highest intensity, but also got the hottest. So, you know, you have to balance that of if it's uncomfortable to wear, don't, don't keep wearing it. So I think a lot of times people kind of override their, their own safety mechanisms that the, oh, this is, you know, really beneficial, but if it's scorching your scalp, you know, that's not so good. So for me, like I said, I've got kind of a big head, so it kind of is tight around my temple. And if I zip it down, then it's really squeezing my head. Um, so, you know, I would just use it unzipped, and that seems fine. Um, and then there's kind of like a dome at the top where I'm not getting any kind of direct contact at the top. So I'm not sure if that's the shape of my head or this is just kind of a little bit too domed that I'm not getting a lot of contact up here at the top. Um, so, you know, again, it's got a pretty good fit. It's got pretty good intensity. We can check that out real quick. Um, so it can fit me. It's not super comfortable. Uh, maybe if you got, like I said, a slightly smaller head, I seem to have a, a larger head. I have trouble finding glasses that fit me or, or all kinds of things. Um, so this was expected. Like I said, you know, just due to the fit of wanting something that's comfortable, that's my biggest determining factor, comfort. Um, we've got EMFs. We can check, check, check that out with the pads and with the, um, you, know, you know, with LED pads and hats and things like that, that there's no fans, the, there's no power adapter here. Um, really, we're just going to look for electric fields because sometimes the electric field kind of transmits along the cord to the device. Um, but I already know Kenreen uses a pretty good three-prong adapter that seems to uh, kind of, you know, get rid of all the EMFs. So I've got it on the, the noise mode in, in case you can't hear, in case you can't read it. But, you know, if I bring it up to it while it's running, there's really no change. So that means, you know, there's no, there's no kind of EMF that I would be concerned about. Um, you know, again, if you want me to do a, a separate video on just EMFs, I can do that. I've got a, a very good blog with lots of sources if you want to learn about EMFs. Um, or you, you can Google and, and find your own information. Um, so, yeah, that's it, you know. Once you get a hang of this, I think, you know, kind of, you got to turn it on. And then, you know, I would probably just start it off at the lowest brightness. So right when you turn it on, it's at the lowest brightness. Um, and then they do have brighter settings. So it increases. It kind of kind of cycles through the brightness. Um, so at the brightest setting, I can do a quick check for the wavelengths and the uh, intensity with my Hopo color, uh, H-O-P-O-O -O color. Um, it's a kind of a nice little compact spectrometer and does intensity. So yeah, I mean, I do verify the three peaks, um, 630, uh, about 850 and 940. So they do have three peaks on each individual LED. And then, uh, you know, I get a pretty high number. I get 92 milliwatts per centimeter squared when you press, when I press my sensor right up close to an LED. So that's, you know, that's pretty hot. Um, you know, again, I don't think you necessarily need that kind of intensity, but if you want to try it out, just be mindful, like I said, of it getting pretty, pretty hot. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's a tremendous intensity for something that you're going to wear and doesn't have a lot of heat sinks. Um, but could be really good. So like I said, it's really good. Low EMF, high power. Um, they, they, like I said, they've recently added more features like pulsings and, and things like that if you're into that. Um, but now let's look at the DG Yao. So you can see, you know, big kind of contrast in the, the shape and the design. So that's why it's, it's very interesting to do this kind of review um, that you get kind of two different shapes. Um, this one actually, if you unzip it,
if you unzip it, it's actually just an LED pad. So you could use it as a multifunction kind of thing. You can just kind of, you know, use it on your body, use it around your limbs. So you could get some multifunctions just out of this, this pad, just using it as a pad. And then it transforms into the hat. So, you know, it's a nice little dual function that, that this one kind of offers as well. So now it's back in the hat mode um, and we can plug it in. So I'll start out with the adapter that they provided. Now this one's a two prong adapter, so I expect it's gonna be a higher EMF. And it's got this little timer. So once you turn it on, it, it's automatically a 20 minute timer. So I think that's kind of a good kind of safety feature. So it doesn't get too hot. It turns itself off in case you're wearing it and you fall asleep or you kind of lose track of time. Um, you know, so that's a nice little little thing. You can't really override that 20 minute timer. So once you, you know, it's just a simple one button press, which I like, you know, sometimes with some devices, you gotta do multiple presses to get the settings you want. And sometimes you just want a simple device, so you press one button and it, and it works. Um, you know, especially like if I wanted this for my mom, just mom, just press one button. Good to go. Um, you know, and we can tell it's actually, you know, looks a little dimmer, maybe because they're using six, 60 nanometer LEDs here, as opposed to this is 630. 630 is generally brighter. Um, so they use 660 and they also use 880. And you can tell these are the invisible 880 nanometer LEDs. Um, so you can see, you know, a lot of people, they get an LED device and then they freak out because some of the LEDs look like they're not working, but that's the invisible near infrared. Near infrared is not a visible light, but sometimes we call it light. Um, so it's important to remember, you know, there's invisible bulbs here too. So, um, so that's what, yeah, that's what we got. You can try it on. So yeah, this one's, you know, got, it's much more spacious, a lot more room. I don't feel anything squeezing down on my head, which is nice. Um, it's got this uh, little strap here in case there's some turbulence, I guess. Um, and then, you know, just kind of fits here. I like it's kind of flat on my top, so I'm getting, you know, kind of good kind of touching of my scalp. Um, it comes down, you know, over the ears and stuff. You know, comes down to the kind of the back of the the neck as well so that you know those are good areas to, to get that coverage um, so again it's very comfortable it doesn't feel too hot or warm um, so again very very simple and practical use it does have kind of a little bit here that that maybe can get your forehead so that's a you know a good consideration um, so yeah let's check the EMF real quick So you can see maybe it's even starting out higher because we're we're got all these cords on the table then when i bring it close you know get it gets pretty high i think sometimes it gets up to like 700 or, or close to 800 so it gets gets pretty high so like i said if if you want to want to learn more about emf you want me to do a separate um thing about emf that's fine but, you know, I know some simple tips to, to kind of adjust the EMF, bring down the EMF. I can swap out this adapter with my own adapter um, that I get from Jamico. And, you know, I put this in my black for the pads. It's the same one. As long as you match the voltage and it's got enough power output, you can swap out the power adapter uh, to one that I know is lower EMF. And we can do that. So now we can retest. And you see, there's, you know, dramatically lower. It's practically, like, no change. So, you know, it's a very simple fix. I'm not, you know, not trying to, whatever, fear monger you or whatever. Um, you know, you spend whatever, 20 bucks on Jamico, and you get it. I'm not telling you get some crystal bowl for a thousand dollars that harmonizes your frequencies you, you can get make a measurable change in your emfs uh just to make in, making a simple swap um there's also you can use uh a, 
battery pack, a 12 volt battery pack, and I can also bypass that and just use a battery pack. Because some people, they want to go around and, and not worry about being connected to the grid at all. So you can be connected to a battery pack and it works just the same. And then that, that's also nice because you're not tethered to a wall anymore and you can really walk around, right? You can have this in like your pocket or strap it on you. And then you can really be more mobile. You can walk around and do your day, uh, whatever you do, and, and be a little bit less constricted by power cords. Um, so again, just simple, you know, simple hacks that, you know, make this a much more enjoyable experience. Um, so you can get the power adapter or a battery from Jamico. I'll put the links in the description. Um, so yeah, that's, that makes it really nice. Um, we can check the intensity real quick. We know it's going to be a little bit lower. There we go. So the red, you know, I have to measure them separately. So the red is about 18 milliwatts per centimeter squared. I'm not sure if you'll be able to read that. So we get 18 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So much lower than the Kenrine can offer. Uh, but again, I think 18 is plenty to get good results. You're going to wear it for, you know, at least 20 minutes. That should be enough to get a decent dose. We're not trying to just blast our brains. Um, so anyway, so we've got that. That was the red one. Yeah, I mean, it really depends how close I can get the sensor to one of the LEDs. Um, but I can get 27 milliwatts per centimeter squared on the near-infrared LED. So, and it does confirm it's 880 nanometers. It's not what we're used to, like 850 or 830 or 810. So I'm not sure why they choose 880. But, you know, maybe you can read that. So 27 on the near infrared, again, that's, I mean, that should be plenty. It's, it's not supposed to be like a laser that you're blasting your brain. It's something more comfortable. You get the dose. You can do it at home every day. So you're not just trying to get one big dose, um, like if you were to go to like a clinic or something. Um, it's meant to be something lower dose that helps you over a longer period of time. Um, so yeah, so they, these are, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, So hopefully that helps you kind of determine if, if, if you want to, you know, purchase from Alibaba. That's usually where you get the best price. I know DG Yao, you, they have their own stores on like Amazon or eBay or um, even their own kind of website. But you pay a little bit more. Um, you got to pay for shipping from China sometimes if you go through Alibaba and ship, you know, shipping prices have gone up uh, over the past year or so. Um, and then Kenrin has like, you know, nice hat more wavelengths, more power, more features if they have dimming or pulsing or whatever they're adding to it. Um, it's low EMF right out of the box, so you don't have to go, you know, shopping if you don't don't want to, you know, go shopping for a low EMF adapter. Um, so, again, both really great products. Um, you know, you can try them out, see what, what they are. Um, you know, I wouldn't get too caught up on, you know, if, if you're strapped for cash and you want something that can help you, you know, maybe can help with your hair, maybe can help with your brain, help with your mood, things like that. I'm not a doctor, it's not medical advice, but, you know, getting something affordable and seeing if that works, as opposed to, oh, you know, I really wish that they had 810 nanometer wavelengths, because that's what a lot of the studies use for better penetration. Um, but, you know, I would just get started with something that's cheaper and accessible, and, you know, keep looking for your ideal product in the future, but a lot of times the ideal product doesn't doesn't always exist. There's always kind of trade-offs of, do you want something maybe more comfortable or something higher power? Do you want, you know, EMF? Do you care about EMFs or do you care about this or that? And are you willing to kind of customize your situation if you buy a separate adapter? Um, so hopefully, you know, there's a lot of good tips and gives you some confidence if you can buy directly from the from these manufacturers, some tips on reducing EMFs, 
um, and some measurements so you kind of know what you're working with. Um, so let me know if this was helpful for you.